Hi everyone. Um, I just wanted to update you on a few things that have been happening to me. I um, Wednesday I went to my doctor for a checkup and um, some things have changed. Um, there was an, uh, there was I was the only one that went in there. There was just maybe one other person that might have been there before me. Um, very, very strange. Um, I hadn't seen him since before the lockdown because um, I had canceled my appointment with him because I knew he flew to Italy right before we heard that Italy was um, having a hard time with the COVID. So he has people over there. So he went there right before it exploded. And I knew he had been there, so I didn't want to go to his office. So I had canceled my appointment. And um, I had been on, a, they had, he had changed me uh, my blood pressure medicine and um, I was doing well on it. But then I started to feel some side effects from it. So I had called him and they gave me an appointment Wednesday to go in. So I go in, I didn't expect that there would be nobody there. There was nobody there. And um, when I got in, I had a couple of like little pimples that came out overnight, two of them right on the base of my neck where the collarbone is. And um, the nurse said to me, what's that on your neck? I says, well, what do you mean what's that on my neck? It's a pimple. What do you think it is? Oh, oh, okay, you know, and she was just, you know, I felt like she was overlooking me, you know. So I'm waiting for the doctor to come in and uh, the woman takes my weight first and my blood pressure. And um, I had lost some more weight, so I'm down maybe almost 55 pounds now. So um, he comes in and he was happy to see me. Of course, I had my mask on. He had his mask on. And he noticed what the thing on my neck. He says, what's that on your neck? I says, what do you mean? I says, it's a pimple. Um, I says, it's, it's under the skin. It just didn't come out. Usually they come out and they're under the skin and then in a day or two they can maybe get a head on them. Sometimes they go back down. So he says, oh, put some alcohol on that. But I felt like they were paying way too much attention to me um, where before this happened with the COVID, if I went and complained about a rash on my leg or... Uh, eczema over here, I mean, they would look at me like, yeah, yeah, you're all right, you know, like not paying any attention to me complaining about symptoms. And now they're looking for symptoms. So anyway, um, they do some blood work on me because I hadn't had some in a, in a while. And um, the lady, after he gets done with me, the lady goes to take my blood and she says, do you want to do an antibody test? I says, no, I don't want to do an antibody test. So she says, well, I can tell that you're very uncomfortable with that. Okay. But I noticed that the form that they check off the boxes on what to check your blood for was a red form. But I didn't say anything. So he, he says to me, I'm very, very pleased with how you're doing. You're doing so well. Your blood pressure is good. Your weight's coming down. Everything is falling into place. You have no problems with your autoimmune uh, issue. Everything's under control. I'm very, very pleased with how you're doing. So I felt like I got a good report, you know, and I left. And that was Wednesday. And uh, this Sunday, that was yesterday, I was due for my eight-week infusion at the hospital, which I get every eight weeks. So between Wednesday and Sunday, uh, I'm thinking about this bl blood work that they did. And I'm kind of feeling that they tested me for COVID without asking my permission to test me. I don't know why, I just had that feeling. And it just kept, it was like became an issue. So, I believe it was Friday night, I went to bed, 
And, uh, you know, I always carry with me a lady's handkerchief. I had lady's handkerchiefs since I was a little girl. My mother told me how to iron them. You would, it's, the men's w would fold like a square and the ladies would be like a, like a, a, a pyramid, you know, like a, on an angle. And I always had ladies' handkerchiefs. They're hard to get these days, but I, I have a very nice supply of ladies' hankies. And I carry them all in my pocket or wherever. So I take it to bed with me, I put it under my pillow. I don't use the tissues. So I had to blow my nose. I blow my nose. And of course, you know, we're all programmed to look and see what you blow when, when you, anything that comes out, we always examine it to make sure we're not bleeding or whatever. So I see it, everything looked normal, and then I go to bed. So then I wake up in the morning and I grab my, my lady's hanky and I open it and whatever was in there turned black. It was like a black pebble. And I, I was touched it and it just turned to dust. And it reminded me of one time I had a skin tag right on my eyelid here. And I asked the father, I said, Father, could you take this off? Because it's getting big and it's bothering me. And that night I went to sleep and when I woke up, it was black, just like that pebble that was in my hanky. And when I touched it, it came right off and it disintegrated into the dust. And the Lord downloaded, as soon as that came to my memory, the Lord downloaded in my mind that even if they did take your blood without your permission behind your back, I can make them see it. I can make them not see it. I can make them overlook what they just did. I can make them lose it. I can make them think you were never even in that office that day. Okay, in other words, I can, I have complete control of you and what's in you and what comes out of you. So don't worry about it. That's what the father downloaded in my head when that happened. And then um, between... I think it was I think it was Saturday my husband a lot of times the father will use my husband to give me a message so what my husband sends me a video of this woman doctor who um, is out in the street and preaching basically that she's treating her COVID patients with uh, chlor chloroquine and z -Pac. And it's working. But the government, the, the, the pharmacy, doesn't want uh, the doctors to, to use it to help the patients. So what she's doing is she said this publicly that she's writing the script but for other purposes. Like because chloroquine is used for diabetes, it's also used for high blood pressure. And it, they use it for many other things. So I heard her and I said, I wonder if this is true news or fake news. No sooner than I said that, I get a call from CVS because I had just picked up a prescription that I've been on for a few years, a couple of hours earlier. So the woman calls me from CVS. Now she knows me because she calls me Mrs. Carlone. She just has to look at me. She knows me. She knows my drugs. She says, um, we're just giving a courtesy call. She says, we want to know how you're doing on your medication. And she mentioned the name of the me medication. She says that you picked up today. Any side effects? I says, no. I says, why would you be asking me that? I said, because I've been on this drug for a few years and you know that I've been on this drug. So why are you asking me now? So she says, well, uh, we were told 
to from CVS. I says, who's CVS? The corporate CVS? So she says, yes. And I says, well, why? Why do you think that is? She says, well, she says, um, now this is a standard answer that they've been given to give people when they ask. She says, well, there was some man who uh, was taking a drug and he didn't really know why he was taking it. So that put that together for me, for the woman, that the video that I watched, that she was prescribing the drug on the prescription for, let's say, high blood pressure or diabetes, but really it was to sneak the drug to the patient to cure the COVID. So um, they want to stop people from um, being cured from the COVID because then it leads to having to take the vaccine. You understand? Um, I read an, an AARP article today that they're linking now. Uh, they have this COVID toes. Search AARP article. COVID toes, and you'll read all these new symptoms that they're connecting to COVID. You know, when you go out in the cold and you go into a warm house and your toes get red and swollen and itchy from the change in the temperature, they're calling that COVID toes and hands. They're saying that weight loss now and loss of appetite is a COVID symptom. They're saying diarrhea and nausea is a COVID symptom. So a any symptom that you could possibly have now for any other illness is a COVID illness symptom. And this is how they're gonna force people to take the vaccine. Now, I went to the hospital on Sunday to get my infusion. And um, they called me the day before and said, well, when you get here, they, they set up um, a lab right in the lobby to take your blood. I says, what do you mean take my blood? They're not taking my, I'm not, I never get my blood taken before my infusion. What are you talking about? Who authorized that? So I said, I just had blood work taken on Wednesday. She, I said, just, you know, check with my doctor and his name is blah, blah, blah. So she says, all right, I'll check and I'll call you back. So. She calls me back and she says, oh yeah, well, I just pulled you up in the system. So we have you. So now I'm even more confirmed that they tested me behind my back for COVID, otherwise they wouldn't have let me in the hospital. So I get to the hospital and she says, go to the woman all the way to the left and she'll give you your bracelet. So I go there, she gives me the bracelet and then a man in a black suit and a mask escorts me to the, um, to the infusion center. Now, I know where the infusion center is. I never had to be escorted there before. And um, it looks the same way yesterday as it did eight weeks ago. The hallway's like every, you look in this hallway, it's like a quarter of a mile long. You look in that hallway, it's a quarter of a mile long. There's two sets of elevators here. There's two sets of elevators there. There's no people. There's nobody but me and this guy who's escorting me through the hospital. And I'm saying to him, I'm starting to raise my voice, and I'm saying to him, where are all the people? Why are there no people in here? Where are all the patients coming in and out of the elevators on gurneys? Why aren't there people here? And um, he's, he's saying, well, it's Sunday, you know. I'm saying to myself, that's, that's a stock answer. That's not... I've been here on Sundays and it's busy on Sundays, busier on Sundays because people are not working and they go to visit the patients on a Sunday. So that's not an excuse. Anyway, I, he leads me to the infusion center and I start questioning the girl in there. And I says, well, where are all the patients that have broken hips and stuff like that? Why aren't they? She says, well, they, they released a lot of people which means they're not taking people that have anything else wrong with them except COVID. So where are these people? I feel sorry for these people that have other illnesses because they're not in that hospital. So the woman sets me up with the IV. 
And, um, you know, I'm a little drowsy because they give you a Benadryl. And uh, it takes about three hours to drip the drug. So about halfway through, you know, because there was, there was nobody moving around. You didn't hear any intercoms or anything like that, either yesterday or eight weeks ago when I was there. There was no doctor's names being called over the internet, over the intercom. So about an hour and a half, two hours into my infusion, I hear over the intercom, Dr. Judy Lynn, Dr. Judy Lynn. He says, that's my name. That's what my mother called me. My name is Judy Lynn. And <laughs> I started smiling and I said, that's the Holy Spirit telling me my mother's with me. Because I was getting upset that there's nobody in there and I said, this is like a Twilight Zone experience here. So I get done with my infusion and I'm leaving the hospital. And I noticed that outside the hospital, they put all, the, every third window, they enclosed it and put, um, you know those silver hoses that come out of the dryer? Ventilation hoses? They Every third window, they removed the glass and put a board and cut a hole for these hoses. And um, these hoses are running up and down the buildings. What they're doing is they're sucking the uh, recirculating the air where the COVID patients are and recirculating the air, taking the air out. And when I was in the infusion, I says, how come there aren't any doctors in here coming in, in the hallways? So she says to me, well, the doctors are hardly here. The nurses are here. So I looked at her and I says, why are the doctors putting the nurses on the front line? They're the ones that are in danger now. The nurses have to go and take care of the patients. And the doctors, they come in for a short period of time to come in, walk in the room and collect their check from the insurance company. And all the while, the nurses are here uh, moving around the, the disease. And I felt really bad for the nurses. People, the world is getting horrible. It's, it's horrible, horrible, horrible. And we are in the tribulation. You have to understand that this is part of the tribulation. It's going to get worse. You need to get right with the Lord. You need to stop following the Apostle Paul and follow Jesus. Okay? There is going to be a rapture, but it's not going to be everyone. Because people have been following man instead of Jesus. And these rapture watchers who are diehards, who are not giving up, um, they're in for trouble. Because they're keeping the people waiting without doing what the Holy Spirit wants them to do. They're misinformed about their walk. And... If they're not walking right, when the first batch is removed, they'll be here for some of the hardship. And I've been trying to tell people that for years. And people think that uh, I'm, I'm uh, just opposing them, but no. I'm for you. I'm for you. I don't want you to be here. Some pretty ugly stuff coming down the pike. I'm just giving you a heads up because if you have some of these symptoms and you go running off to the doctor, think twice. Just think, okay? Because once they get their hands on you, you don't know what they're going to do. All right? I'll be back. People, I have some more news um, on the Apostle Paul that I am uh, just uh, going over, and I have some more devotions. So I'll be back. So stay tuned. God bless you, and have a beautiful day in the Lord. Don't forget, I love you. Bye-bye.